Hi, how's it going guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to start um, my journal a little ahead. So in reality, all I did was I sanded it. I had previously decorated this uh, book because I, I, had, I made a part, I uh, decorated a party with books and I just grabbed books and I decorate the cover. I didn't do nothing to the inside, but I'm still gonna recycle them even further and I'm gonna reuse them again in this project. So I sanded down a little bit of the previous decoration. The books were really visible. I really didn't even have to decorate them, but I had fun doing it. Anyways, so um, what I did here is I doubled um, my stencil. So the stencil was twice as much as you guys see now. What I did is I cut it in half and I glued it on itself so that the stencil is twice as thick. So when I, um, you know, put the, the medium in, it's the, the, um, the relief is a little deeper. Uh, so I wanted to make it more uh, visible than what it usually would be if it was just a regular stencil. It's more like a sculptural kind of thing. And if, if I ever get to doing any of my products that I have in mind, I have so many products in mind, but, um, and one day I wish I could have my, my, you know, my scrap, my like supplies and stuff. Um, I would like to do that stencils that are thicker so that when you put your medium in there, it's actually thicker, you know, it's thicker than regular. So I feel like you have more use for it, like more texture. I don't know. It's, it could just be me. But anyways, if you want to do that, you can do what I did here, which is I cut it down to half and I glued it on itself. So it's twice as thick and therefore uh, it's deep. It's more. It comes out more of the book. I didn't have the yellow that I quite had in mind. So I mixed a little bit of this light, like almost like an egg color and this other yellow, which is kind of like, I feel like bird or sunflower color, like more of a neon yellow. So what I'm doing here is just pretty much mixing it and applying. I did two coats in the front and I'm going to do one coat in the back only because I'm going to do this uh, reverse stenciling kind of effect. And so what I'm doing here is I'm lit, I'm lit, putting a lot of paint on my on the back. Make sure I cover it right. But I noticed that when you take off paint, you can kind of see the grayish in the background. So I feel like I wanted to play with that and the stencil and kind of give it a, a, a light uh, honeycomb texture without really having the honeycomb texture. Next step was for me to kind of bring up the honeycombs. And for, to do that, I want to make this color amberish look to it or color to it. So I'm mixing it, this Pueblo color, which is like a terracotta color. And I'm bringing it back a little bit to uh, bring match into the book by putting some of that color that's already in the book in there, just so that it gives it that, um, you know, color depth into it. I, it's in my head. It's probably not important or not true, but in my head, if you put some of the color from that you're adding to that color. So like in this book, this example of the book is yellow. And if I'm adding a little bit of the yellow into the new color that I'm bringing in, it will automatically match because I added a little bit of it. But I don't think it's true. Don't quote me on it, but that's what I did here. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to go and pretty much color one at a time, one by one. And uh, sometimes when it's too much of it, I'm going to take it back. So what I'm doing here is making sure that most of them are even. So it's like an even layer, making sure that the um, paint doesn't seep to the bottom color. So I want the yellow on the back to be uh, the brightest yellow. And my colors are going to stay on the upper level. Then I go back with that same color. But I added one tiny drop more of that Pueblo color to make it a little bit thicker so it's not as watery and runny. And I'm being selective with a few honeycombs here and there just to give it an accented, um, you know, more texture, or more dimension to my honeycombs. And with that same color, I'm going to the back panel and doing like a dripping, like a honey dripping uh, on the back. It's just a, I don't know, I think honey's dripping. Let me know what you guys think. To uh, frame all of that, I'm going with the vintage um, vintage photo 
and just kind of brushing the edges just to frame in the whole book cover. Moving on to another part of this journal will be um, this vellum paper. I had this marble looking one. I didn't have a white one. Preferably I wanted to have a white one, but I think it ended up working out. Um, what I did is I pre-wetted it with coffee water. Then I went ahead and I wiped on there uh, fossilized amber, I think it was, and water. So just pretty much just dyeing the uh, vellum a little tint of yellow. That's all it was. To that paper, I'm adding uh, extra heavy body gel, uh, fossilized amber spray and coffee water. And what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure I mix it really well. So when I add it, it looks like a more like a 3D um, of that honeycomb effect. I let that dry a little bit just because I didn't want to smear it. Um, the main purpose, I mean, the main reason why I didn't want it smeared because it's um, different sheenness to the media. So to the back back paper and the, what I'm applying has a different sheen. And if, I, if it smears a little bit, then you lose that contrast and then you don't have that shape anymore because it's so, it's just transparent. So I let the first coat dry completely and then I came back to my to my add-ons of this layer and um, added some more. Once that was kind of dry, I went back with this um, kind of clear, see-through, transparent paint from Golden. And I painted the tops a little bit of all the, the well, the hills of all the honeycombs with that. It's just a little bit. It wasn't even done right. It was just like dabs here and there, like I did in my cover, well, in my other cover. And then what I'm doing here is to make it more 3D are uh, in my head. I'm not even sure if it looks that way to you, but in my head, what I'm doing here is I'm drawing flat honeycombs. So there'd be some in the background and some in the foreground. I wanted to explain this to you as is because I tried to, you know, took me a while. I did a few other ones. Um, okay, so because I took me a while to figure out, like kind of fold and do this. It was hard for me to like just record the process. So let me explain the process. This one is probably better cause it's like cleaner. But at the end of the day, I have two squares, one this way and one this way. And then I came around my wire in the middle and did a like a loop this one in the middle. So this one is just the extra wire and I just kind of like tucked it in here. But in reality, all I need for this structure is two squares, this way and this way. Now, the way I did mine was instead of going uh, two squares and then two squares, my thought was to unite it afterwards, but the wire is thicker. Um, and you know, if you are into making stuff like I am, uh, you, you may wanna go to the 99 cent store and pick up one of these. These are in the garden section because these are called like uh, wire garden wire or something like to hold up plants and stuff. And uh, look at all this for a dollar. And it's like the strong kind, you know? So I love it because it's structural. Anyway, and it'll last me a while too. Like I guess just in time for the next spring as well to, to get uh, another one. Um, okay, so uh, 
The goal was to do two squares and then unite it in the middle, right? But what I noticed is that you'd have to do this kind of thing where um, this, you know, the little loop and to hold, like if you were to do a square and then you did a loop to hold, enclose the square. Like if I were to solder them, that would be better, but you'd have to do this. So then you lose um, strength coming in because it just comes out the loop, you know, it just comes in like this. So, and I need the, that pre pressure. So instead of doing uh, four, I mean, two squares and then putting them together, I just went around like here, you see here. So I started at a square. Where's my starting point? Ugh, I don't even know how I started this thing. Oh, right here. Okay, so this is my starting point and I went around here, here, and then here. And then what I did is I zigged to the other corner and then did the other square. And then when I got to the center, I just tied it up in the middle and then closed it up on the other end. To me, that was easier. Um, it's kind of like what I did here. You know, you start at one point, but this one I started in the middle and it's kind of wonky because see, it loses a uh, structure strength there. You see, and I need, I don't, I, I need not that not to happen. And I, plus this was too big for the body that I made. So anywho, um, okay. And so, um, you need, I'm going to explain all the parts. So maybe if you want to make it, you understand why you need all the five, um, I'm taking engineer. I'm going to start taking engineer classes so I can learn all the terms of everything. Um, uh, but so every, is it plain? No, it's not a plane. So every structure, um, it has a purpose, right? So the base is going to sit on the bottom, of course, on the base, but then it also holds my rubber band, right? And then the wings are attached to the center one. That is a little lower because my I want my wings to go down like this, right? So they can have a an elevation. I don't want them flat. I mean, if you want them flat, um, you could all you could have all these dimensions on the same level. But you know, because I want them up a little bit, I brought the the center. That's why I put it down on the corner. I mean, on the on the yeah on the crossing point. So these other two. Um, surfaces uh, corners or sticks or <laughs> wires are to hold my wings so and then the rubber band goes I put it to here first then I put it around then I brought it in under my under the where they sit right so that oh my goodness gracious and then what I did is I drew my wings and with the wire I kind of traced around this shape to put my wings right here. Now, I am going to attempt in live camera to glue them down, right? To crazy glue them together. But check this out. I don't want to glue beyond this point in case I have to work on here. You know, like kind of leaving yourself a, a hood to work under the hood kind of thing if I needed to. I also want to make sure I have enough space base so my wings can fold okay so i left a little bit of lip just in case i needed to uh cover the wire a little bit more but um i could always come back and trim it or i could always come back and paint over it but generally this is kind of like the wing shape that i have and this is the wing design and this is how i'm going to glue it and so it's going to work like this and now that I have you here and I have your full attention, I'm gonna explain other things. This is the antennas. Now, the way I'm gonna attach, oh, and this is the body. So I'm gonna introduce you the antennas and the body, right? I know it looks funky and it doesn't look like a bee body, but, but, but stay along, come along with me. Okay, so the body goes in, it's folded right here. So these little flaps is not part of the body you see but it's part of the structure that makes this whole thing work so once the wings are attached 
I'm going to glue this lip and this lip uh, this way. Like this. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And then, uh, sort of like that. So when I fold it, it kind of goes in like this. It gives you that, you know, little flexibility. Now, I left these little lips on here because I want to, one, I want to give it dimension, right? So, and then two, I want to make sure I cover everything. These two wires. Because this is what I, this is why I, I didn't like this one. Well, plus it's all wonky. But because it's ginormous compared to the body I had already made. So, it goes like this. Right? And then this is kind of sort of what I, what I want the design to be on the B. And this is the B head, right? And these are where these come in. So I'm gonna attach them to here, like so. And then my goal is to maybe twist around it here once. Maybe twice. There you go, see? Oh my goodness gracious, look at that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is poke two little holes so I know exactly where they're gonna go, and then just kinda put those through here and then have them come out. Now, that's the goal. This is the first time I actually kinda have a plan of things. I usually have um, kinda like, um, Learning to fly as, a, as I'm falling, but this 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 time I I, I I dream I don't dream of them, but I do like sit there and like oh this idea comes in my head and then I work it out in my head. Most of the time I'm I'm doing something else, but yeah this came to me as is. So we'll see if it works out, and um, hope you enjoy it. All that to say that my butterfly is gonna go in this hole and it's kinda gonna serve as a enclosure, as a closure to my butt. So I'm cutting a hole out of the cover and I'm gonna use that piece that I cut out to as part of where the bees, I mean the yeah, the bee's gonna sit. So I cut it, then you sand it so that it comes in and out easy from that square that you cut out from the cover. And pretty much what I'm doing now is after I've painted the bee, I was about to glue it when I realized that painting it on once it was glue is going to be pain of the gluteus maximus. So I was able to paint it before I attached it to the rest of the body. Once it's glued, I am um, marking where I want to cut. Was I want to cut out even further because you see how it's coming out of the book a lot. I want it to go in a little bit more. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting down on this part of where it's gonna sit. I want it to sit even further down. I want it, my goal was to sit it down as much as I could. So I'm bringing it down on this little thing that is gonna sit that goes inside the book. I know it's a lot of in this and that, but you will, you will see what's gonna happen. And now this is the inside cover where the bee is gonna sit. To push it in even further, I also made a hole on this so that it's, it's able to sit 
that little cube, I mean, the bee feet are going to sit inside that square of that inner square that you see there. <laughs> I realize, I realize what I'm saying. Sorry about that. I realize what I'm saying, but follow along. So um, what I did is I scored it before I glued it down. And I put magnets on the four corners, not knowing if I'm going to use all four corner magnets, but because I'm gluing it, um, now I want to make sure that if I wanted to have access, if I want my cover to have uh, magnets, might as well put it on before I cover it, right? So since I cut out the hole of where my B feet are going to sit, I wanted to have something strong um, to sit, but not thick. So I'm just putting a little piece of extra cardboard there so that um, I can put a, the glue there and it won't seep through to the other side. And pretty much I'm wrapping this whole piece of paper because it's another cover. So I could have just cut the, you know, the size and put it, but I want it to be completely covered because this, you'll see why, you'll see how it'll, it'll look better that fact that I'm wrapping this cover rather than just, you know, put covering the front and covering the back. Now you guys know I always um, draw up a file folder. This is no exception to the rule <laughs> or to my brain, how it works. Um, now I made this like a book cover, not is it library book, like rental thingy. Uh, but in my head, I didn't realize that I didn't do the pocket and the little uh, thing that's on top, like where you keep the, the, the dates written down. So what I'm gonna show you is what, how I fixed it. I cut the bottom and the top separately. Um, in my head, I didn't realize I had not drawn it up as sort of like, you, you know, if you fold it onto itself like a pocket. So um, my way to fixing it is making the bottom a pocket and then cutting the top and then just bringing it in a little bit more. And that was it. Because I didn't plan my magnets accordingly, I had to improvise as to how I cover the magnets in the front. I did, I went back and fixed it how it was, uh, how it was before, like with the honeycombs. But in the inside, I just put a label there. And I'm going to... Uh, so it kind of, you don't see that much of a difference between the inside or where the bee comes in and the book cover. I'm going to decorate the whole bottom with, uh, these little butter, um, flower for that cover where this bee sits. I'm going to hold it in place with these paper hands. Now this is really thick cardboard. It's a little bit thicker than uh, cardstock. So I wanted to hold the structure. So. The thinner one that you see there is going to fold onto itself, but this one only half of it holds onto, I mean, folds onto itself. And the other part, the long part that you see there without any uh, holes on it, is going to be my base that sits on the back cover so that the hinge kind of floats from the back cover, not floats, but uh, is able to extrude from the back uh, cover, the inner back cover of the book that holds onto the other cover where the butterfly sits. All will come clear once this thing is done. I scored where I want the cover, I mean the cardboard to fold. And then what I'm doing here to shape the curvatures, because I don't want it to fold or crack. I want it to bend. So in order for me to accomplish that without folding it, I'm going to use my, my uh, pencil or my paintbrush to make that curvature because in there it's going to sit a wire and I don't want it to hug the wire because I don't want it to be hard to use, but I want it to have that space. So where it allows me to, uh, it allows it to travel, uh, with ease in, in the, once the wire is inside now, because I don't want it co color, um, whatever that color is, it's not craft color. It's like ugh, yellowish. You don't really see it on screen, but it's not a nice color. Um, I'm going to use what I usually do is a little bit of gesso and a little bit of glue with the color that I want. So it's, um, it's more like a paste, if you'd say, <laughs> but, um, 
it works really good because it, it it doesn't allow the paint to seep in through the cardboard because otherwise the paint would the cardboard would completely suck in the paint and you'd have to do like a few layers also i don't like the texture of this cardboard um i found it in the trash not in the trash but like one of my family members threw it away and i was like awesome so i feel like um, i didn't want that texture so this car uh, mixture also helps cover some of that texture and it gives it a new texture which is paint you know and i'd rather have that paint texture once my paint is dried i'm gonna assemble my hinge um i use that wire that same wire that i used to make my bees Now, I think this is going to be the easiest binding I probably have done. I'm going to, I have three signatures um, that I've prepared for my journal. Now, I'm going to attach two strips per signature, and I'm going to uh, alternate the strips between each signature. So, um, in the middle, one of the signatures is going to be the top in the middle, and then uh, the next signature is going to be a little lower from that on both the top and then the middle. What I'm doing here is I'm just marking where each of this, those uh, little strips are going to go, and pretty much I'm just uh, stapling them to the signature as well as um, binding the signature together. Once that is done, I'm going to uh, glued, glued, glue <laughs> all my tabs onto the spine um, onto the book cover once that glued into place I'm going to attach that one cover you guys saw me making earlier. I'm going to attach that to the cover of this little booklet that I made. Okay, so here's the finished product. Uh, I made it kind of look like it was a stamp. And that's the idea, but... Um, so you open it like this, you unattach it. I think I put too many magnets in the, in here. Cause I put, remember I put two here and one here. I covered it with this uh, button or like round sticker here, but then this comes in the printable kit. So I use that to cover these two magnets cause I thought about it afterwards, remember? <clears throat> This is my other cover, the other, the, where the bee comes in. And here's the tag. And here is, you see that? Wait, this shouldn't, I, I need to put a little bit more glue there, but slides right in. This is where these are just candy wrappers that I had, but they've I had it in my bee drawer just because it reminds me of bees. These little um, I don't know bees. I feel like honey reminds me of gold. I don't know why. This is the other cover we made. Here's my bookmark. Be helpful. What is it called? Be outstanding. Be outstanding, be helpful. There's another bee I, I, I drew inside. So this one's for the bear. Uh, bear, the bees are helping the bear collect stars. And here's a jar full of stars. Here's a little layout I made with one of the tags from the printables. This is a little leftover from that paper. Um, be magical, she's, she's wearing uh, Mickey ears. 
uh, be a dreamer. He's shooting for the stars. Uh, let me see. Another like little quick layout that I did using this B, uh, what is it called? Label is uh, inspired by this B label, sort of. Uh, so it's a honey bee delicious. Get it? Delicious, delicious. And then I got California because that's where I'm in. Uh, has some other ephemera. And here's some more of that gold wrapper. Uh, warrior bee. Actually, this should have been bee brave. But you know what? This one is, I think, uh, bee, bee, uh, what is it called? I had it written down which ones I wanted to do. Um, oh, be creative because you know she's using something else. And then I had drawn another little bee with the balloon. Um, and then uh, these I just this one I just insert inserted here because I had it left over. But that's my binding right there, the binding that I did. It's probably the easiest binding I've done. You staple the each signature to one of these, two of these. And then, so there's three signatures. Then you just glue those signatures onto your cover. And there's the cover. And there you go. It slides right in. Of course, there you go. There's my B. And this is how I close it. Badam. But see, I think I, I dropped it. Well, no, I don't think I dropped it, but I dropped it. When I had it right here on the corner of my side, I dropped it, and then another book that I was working on fell on top of it. And it used, you see it's a little lopsided on this side now. <laughs> it's walking with, it's flying with the quirk. Here's the back. And here's my labor, maker's label. Here's the spine. I think I want to do something to it later. And this is the inside spine of the other um, inside cover. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for uh, all your comments. Thank you to my patrons. Um, all the images that you guys saw here will be available for you to download on the Patreon page. Till next time, guys, stay safe. Love you guys. Stay crafting. Bye.